The wait continues as the Edmonton Oilers have yet to make a decision on the offer sheets given to Dylan Holloway and defenseman Philip Broberg. But before we get into all the breakdowns on how the Oilers are going to make that cap space, if they potentially do want to keep these two prospects, make sure to stay tuned to Oilers Digest here as we just reached 1,500 subscribers. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for joining us uh, joining us along the ride and Getting all of your Oiler news day in and day out. But let's get right into it. Let's get right into all of the the recent Oiler news speculations breakdown. However you call it when it's time to make room on the cap space floor. Yes, there was a article by the Ottawa uh, Sun writer Bruce Garriock the other day. When it came to the Oilers trying to clear up cap space, he said league executives told Post Media on Thursday that the Oilers are trying to get the contracts of defenseman Cody Ceci, who's currently making 3.25 for uh, this upcoming season, and Brett Kulak off the books making 2.75 so they could match the offer sheets and we're told that there are teams that have shown interest but if teams are going to make those deals they're going to want something extra from the Oilers to take on CC or Kulak's contracts we're told that could be a first or second round pick in both scenarios because teams know they got Jackson cornered of course he's the uh, president of hockey operations helping alongside Stan Bowman there as he is the general manager and the price only goes up at this time of year because many teams have already settled their rosters and nobody will do the Oilers any favors without them ponying up another asset. And that's that's kind of big here. Like the, Oilers, the other teams know that the Oilers are in trouble, so why help them out unless you can get sub something substantial in the deal? And there's a few few trade rumors floating around the block here. Uh, some, some more speculation onto how the Oilers could clear cap space. And there was... A trade pitch on Puckpedia that has the Maple Leafs reacquiring the $13 million defenseman. You can see there in the picture below that is Cody CC, where the trade rumor would be, you know, the Leafs will get Cody CC and prospect Bo Akey, uh, an Oilers prospect who's playing for the Barry Cole to the OHL, and the Oilers get Alex Steves, who's currently been with the Toronto Marlies the past couple of years, of course, even more so uh, a fringe NHLer at this point, but it's just a... a um, a way for the Leafs to give up something without not really giving up anything at all. Seeing here, with the Maple Leafs taking on Cody Cece's contract, Toronto would also acquire Bo Akey, who was one of Edmonton's top defensive prospects. Akey was drafted in the second round of the 2023 NHL Draft, and last season he appeared in just 14 games in the OHL, recording four goals and five assists for nine points. And as for the return, Edmonton will require RFA forward Steves. Steves is without a contract and has been a fringe NHL player in his career. However, the proposed deal is more about moving Cody Cece's contract so Edmonton can match the offer sheets to Broberg and Holloway. Now, uh, I don't really see a world in which the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, do make this deal. Of course, they did have Cody Cece before. didn't really work out for them uh, at all. And then he went to Pittsburgh and then Edmonton. So, yeah, it's more more so just a, a fever dream trade pitch more than anything else. I mean, it would also hurt for the Edmonton to, you know, while they're treating, tr trying to keep one of their, their top defensive prospects, they lose a stud in Bo Akey in the process. I think that's one where Edmonton would look at, laugh at, and then just hang up the phone. But there's been some uh, other alternatives here, and the Vancouver Canucks could offer up an alternative. Rather than demanding a pick, they could ask Edmonton to take the Tucker Pullman contract off their hands. Tucker Pullman hasn't played since January 2023 because of migraines and isn't expected to play again. If the Oilers were to pick up Pullman in a deal, they could park his contract on LTIR. In exchange, you got to think the Canucks might be interested in Brett Kulak rather than Cody Ceci. And again, that's also another question mark where the Vancouver Canucks, why, again, why would they help out a, a divisional rival of course they were met in the second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs this year the Canucks already took Vincent DeHarnay off Edmonton's hands so trying to take Brett Kulak again uh it's a bit of a different scenario you know trade rather than free agency but as as, as nice as it would be for the Oilers to sort of like do that again um I don't think so even though it would help them with the uh, LTIR process again with Evander Kane going on LTIR clears up uh, a little over five million and then adding on tucker pullman's two and a half million it seems enticing but again uh it would take a lot more for vancouver to you know sort of try to agree to a deal as you can see there's cap hit two and a half million for the upcoming year and again isn't expected to play ever again but if the club uh, does, you know, decide to go ahead and trade Cody CC, clearing up the 3.25 million with no money coming back, so let's say like a mid-round to late-round pick, uh, 
this roster with Kane on LTR could be cap compliant with all the elements required to be a competitive team. You can see there the offensive side, uh, more so the the top six, not so much the bottom six. Um, it, it's it's not so change of course. You still have Skinner, McDavid, Zach Hyman, Nugent Hopkins, Draw Seidel, Victor Arvidsson maintaining, maintaining your top six, and of course you have Dylan Holloway if he is matched, Adam Henrique, Connor Brown, and then the fourth line there of Matisse, Yanmark, Derek Ryan, and. Corey Perry, so we take a lot of cap maneuvering to sort of get this under control, but the defense is where, um, again, it starts to lose me here. You, of course, you have, you know, your top pairing of Ekholm and Bouchard, Nurse and Broberg, and then Kulak, and either Troy Stetcher or Josh Brown. I went over Stetcher and Brown in a video just recently. Of course, you know, Cody Cece, not exactly a fan favorite, but Troy Stetcher, very versatile. I think he could work out with the Oilers on that third pairing. Uh, but when it comes to low tide here of the athletic, he says the Oilers do need to keep Philip Roberg on the roster in order to improve year after year. His offer sheet is more expensive for a reason, and Edmonton has to match the offer sheet on the defense. And adding Dylan Holloway, a valuable player in his own right, could be sacrificed and replaced eternally. It could be a question mark of a guy like Matthew Savoy. The quality of the roster uh, would be reduced, but not completely compromised. And I, I would have to agree on that front at the beginning. I said to, you know, match Holloway, but lose Philip Broberg, but when it comes to, you know, the quality of both players, you know, Broberg, you don't really see those, you know, too often, I think he could become an absolute stud of a defenseman for the Oilers, four and a half, sure, at the at the time, seems like an overpay, but, you know, as soon, you know, he starts to grow into his contract, and he would provide the Oilers, you know, something substantial on the blue line, of course, uh, two years down the road when, of course, they go back to the negotiating table. And again, Dylan Holloway, loved him as a player, but yeah, he um, he could be replaced internally uh, rather easily. Lastly here, uh, the ro yeah, again, the roster would see minimal change. Matisse Yamark would slide up to the uh, third left wing spot on that third line. Lane Peterson, who spent all pretty much all of last year with the Bakersfield Condors, could slide in at the fourth line center spot. And the coaching staff would have to decide which of the extra defenders, Brown or Stetcher, uh, would land in Bakersfield. Co Cody Cece would stay on the roster, giving the Oilers a veteran first and third pairing with Broberg alongside Nurse on the second pair. It is the compromise that makes the most sense. And you can see there, you know, Cody CC. Uh, very expensive third pairing that would be there. Um, but again, it, it makes the most sense there. You, you want to keep that defensive core um, together. And losing Dylan Holloway at first, it would sting a bit. But I mean, when it, the Oilers top six would make up for his absence in the meantime. And he's been riddled with injuries uh, throughout, you know, his college career and into the NHL. So again, just replacing him would be um, uh, much easier than trying to replace Philip Broberg. Of course, you can go out there and, you know, grab a guy like Tyson Berry, bring him back to the Oilers. Justin Schultz, I think he'd be reluctant to come back to the Oilers. But... You got to think down the road and not just ahead. Uh, that's it for today's video. Um, make sure you have yourselves a great week. We'll be back again tomorrow with another video. Uh, have yourselves a great day. I'm Matt.